electric particles and the lightweight particles, the K-Mason and the anti-K-Mason and all those things. Then it is converted into what was said to be by the scientists twenty years ago that it is converted into vibrations of light. In those days when I was a student at Aligarh, the scientific world had this dictum, all matter is ultimately vibrations of light. And the scientists in the meantime proceeded with further analysis. And now they say that all matter is ultimately anti-matter, anti-matter. All matter is ultimately anti-matter. If you ask them what this anti-matter means, I don't think there is any need to ask them because the very word indicates the antimatter is that which is not matter. The antimatter is that which is the very opposite of matter in all its qualities. Now, if matter can be seen, the antimatter cannot be seen. If matter can be weighed, the antimatter cannot be weighed. If matter occupies a certain volume, the antimatter does not occupy a volume. If matter has a certain area, antimatter has no area. I'll bring your minds back to what I said in the beginning. According to Islam, this world is quality transforming itself into quantity. You must have heard even from your ulama or in your even elementary books of theology that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this world out of absolute Adam, out of sheer non-existence. Now this antimatter is the non-existence of matter, plainly. And the scientists have reached in their physics laboratories only up to this point. But even this is even this is enough for us to understand what the Holy Prophet is. To understand the nature of his life when he was here, physically visible and contactable by the human being, to understand what he is now, what is the nature of his life now, whether he has passed away like the ordinary human being, and what is the passing away even of the ordinary human being. We should try to understand this, and I think then the different types of confusions which are arising in the minds of the people will vanish. The Holy Quran says that I am guidance, a comprehensive guidance in all matters in which human beings need guidance. Now ask the Holy Quran, how did Allah create this? these heavens and the earth. How did Allah create these things which we see? Ask the Holy Quran and ask the expounder of the Holy Quran, that is the Holy Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, better whom, better than whom there is no authority who can expound the Holy Quran. He is the mouthpiece of the Quranic revelation. What do you find in the Qur'an? The Qur'an says, Allahu nuru samawati wal ard. Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. Take it, literally. The safety is there. We don't know in what sense light. That is sure. Because when, as students of science, we study light, we find that light is of different types and different categories. There is the coarse light which we see. Then there are other types of light. The alpha rays, the beta rays, the gamma rays, the delta rays, the infrared rays, the ultraviolet rays. The X-rays, so many other rays, about 21 of them which have been found out by the scientists. 
Now the function of each one of them is not the same, the constitution of each one of them is not the same. The laws which govern each of these lights are not the same. I'll tell you about an experiment made. There was a, an, a, an eminent scientist in the United States called Dr. George Antonoff. He was a member of the United States Atomic Energy Commission. He came to Islam and became a Muslim through me. When I went to, the, to his country the next time and I met him there, because he knew that I am also a very humble student of science, so he would talk to me on scientific theory. He told me about a new experiment that he had made. The experiment was that he operated upon one eye of a cat, took out the eyeball from the socket, kept the other eye intact. Then he reduced this eyeball into its final form, antimatter. That the scientists are doing day in and day out. I mean, it is an ordinary experiment with them. He reduced this eyeball, which had been taken out of the socket, into antimatter. Then he exposed the other eye of the cat through one foot of lead with a very narrow aperture inside that, exposed the other eye of the cat with the vibrations of this antimatter obtained from that amputated eye. Remember, this matter, this antimatter which he had obtained from the amputated eye belonged to the same cat. And its vibrations were exposed through a very narrow aperture in a tube of lead which was one feet by one feet by one feet. And he told me that the moment these vibrations were exposed to the other eye of the cat, the entire brain burst out of the cat. What is this phenomenon? Energy is convertible into mass, quality is convertible into quantity, antimatter is convertible into matter, and matter is con convertible into antimatter. Now talk about what is life and what is death and what is this body and how perishable it is and how non-perishable it is, what is the nature of this body and what is the nature of human existence. The entire view changes. Then try to proceed to find out as to who is the Holy Prophet Muhammad Ali Salatu. I must say this is a, an infinitely vulgar way of saying that the Holy Prophet is like us. The most vulgar way of saying it. Only a most ignorant man and a most debased person can say it who is absolutely ignorant. The Holy Prophet is matchless. You cannot compare him in creation to anyone. Of course, he is God's creature. He is not God, but he is matchless. And he is the highest in God's creation. It is not a matter of interpretation, my dear sir. It is not something sectarian. It is the very foundation of Islam. Take it away and, is, and Islam is there no more. That is the spirit of Islam. Everything in this world has got a body and it has got a spirit. 